One of the things that seems to surprise a lot of people when I talk to them about my childhood and my early beliefs is a way in which I wasn't raised a Christian at home. My father was an atheist and my mother, whilst Catholic, would probably be considered more cultural Catholic. She never once tried to push her religion onto me or really even talk to me about it as I was growing up. And I don't think that was simply out of some respect for my father. I think a large part of it was her Catholicism had been directly attached to a community she grew up in in the Netherlands, and that didn't really transfer with her when she moved to the UK. Sure, she mentioned the annual pilgrimage she'd take with her mum and her sister, cycling across the border into Germany to visit a nearby cathedral, but this was after I was a militant atheist on YouTube and wasn't something she pushed on to me. No, my early Christian beliefs came from a very different source, a supposedly secular education. This was not an openly religious school, and yet in many small ways, Christianity was pushed on to us. And much later, towards the very end of my school years, by which point I lost my faith, I began to notice signs that suggested that they knew what they were doing was wrong. During a spring assembly, I remember our head teacher come out and preface her assembly by telling us that this was, quote, not a religious assembly before she went on to talk about Christ and how we should all look up to him. Tried to figure that one out. I guess she felt that if she asserted it wasn't a religious assembly, that made it true. Or maybe it was meant as a warning against those who would perhaps report what had happened. I remember raising the issue with my friends later, some of who didn't really like the facts that I was critical of religion and its place in school. That's actually part of the reason I set up my channel. I just left one YouTube community for self-preservation, I was looking for another, and religion and its intrusion into my day-to-day -day life was really beginning to bother me. But going back to the way this whole thing started, it hadn't been very direct. It had always been a rather subtle creeping of Christianity. It had been present from the moment I moved to the Cambly area, I know that much. I moved there in year two, the final year of primary school, so about six or seven years of age, and I remember being read Bible stories like Daniel in the lion's den. That's also the time where I first saw the Noah and Abraham episodes of Testament, the Bible in animation. The Abraham episode, by the way, terrified my childhood mind. Seeing the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah and Lot's wife turning to salt was only made more terrifying by the stop motion puppets. I was young, but I was empathetic enough to realize that these are not the faces one pulls when faced with the actions of an apparent loving God. So it was all rather subtle, but they kept at it over the years. In junior school, we did have culture fortnights, times during which the school would pick a culture either living or historic, and we'd study it. And that was about as close as our school came to religious diversity. The only religion other than Judaism which we studied properly was Hinduism, but get this, blended with both Sikhism and Buddhism. Like, most of the teachers just lumped the three together as if it were no biggie. Now I must stress, these sessions focus almost entirely on the cultural aspects. For example, I understood the whole food service offered at the Gurdwara when I first visited a temple shortly after arriving in India. But I knew next to nothing about the religious beliefs behind it and that was something I wanted to change. I doubt it will come up much on this channel, but you never know, and the history is one connected to both Hinduism and Islam. But apart from this and the junior prerequisites of Romans and the Egyptians, it was Jesus all the way. One of the activities we had involved writing letters to Jesus, a form of role play we had with no other religion, just Christianity. Then there was a project in which we discussed how if we were a disciple, what we'd be known for. I was, of course, Peter the Gamer. I kid you not, I was actually that lame. But I think one of my personal favourites had to be this gingerbread cutter outline on a blank piece of paper, inside of which we were supposed to write words to describe Jesus. Like, that's how cringe this actually was. More recently, I went through some of my surviving school project books whilst visiting my grandparents in Norway. And the amount of time dedicated to Christianity was frankly absurd. Now things did get better as I moved on to secondary school, but there were still issues. That was where I was given my first Bible. 
It was one of those small red pocket Bibles which contained the New Testament and Psalms and had an index for various contemporary issues at the back. What I am sure of, however, is the fact that they, two women and a man, were given school assembly time to effectively preach damnation at us before standing at the door with a table covered in these Bibles, making sure everyone who left had one before exiting the door. And at the time, that didn't strike me as odd. After all, it was like I'd always grown up with. But looking back on it, I can see it was really fucked up. Like, I don't know what would have happened if a student said no. I hope they would have been civil. But regardless of that, forcing a student into a situation that they have to actively say no to free adults, all complete strangers by the way, in what was a mandatory assembly was bloody disgusting. This was not an opt-in or anything, none of our parents had been informed, this was mandatory for all students. So I just took my Bible and I left. And that's when I began reading said pocket Bible and really contemplating the other stuff I'd been taught, such as the Old Testament with Abraham, Sodom and Gomorrah, and Noah. In time, the description of God began to make me very paranoid. It probably doesn't help that around this time I was also becoming aware of death in its fullest extent. Like previously I knew about death as a concept, I'd done a lot of fishing and had seen death in both movies and TV, but I'd never quite wrestled with death conceptually. When that started to change, it got really heavy, really fast. I remember that in the first and second year of RE, we were forced to keep religious diaries. I use the word forced because failing to write on some sort of personal religious thought was seen as refusing to do one's work. So students were taught, you either partook in religious practice, or you put yourself at risk of detention. Now for me, I had stuff to write. Again, I'd been moulded into a Christian by my school, and so I talked about many different things. Then one day, I wrote about my thoughts on death. I remember that a neighbourhood cat I'd been rather close to had passed away, and ever since then, any time I saw something like a hedgehog on the side of the road, or someone dying in a film, I found my chest tightening. I was being forced to confront death, and I was in horror that a god would allow for it, afterlife or not. I also explained how I was terrified that god would decide to end my life were I to step out of line for something as simple as a lie. That's when my RE teacher asked me to stay behind and try to talk to me about it, not in the open style of conversation about whether a god really existed or if the Christian concept of God had any merit, but simply to try and get me to stop questioning my Christian beliefs. In the end, I remember destroying that red pocket Bible. I was heavily bullied at school and was going through some shit at home, and over time, it just drained me. My school day used to consist of waking up at quarter to six in the morning, leaving for school at around half past six to quarter to seven, and sitting in the cafeteria until the bell rang at quarter to nine. I also starved myself most days, along with only sparingly drinking water so that I wouldn't need to go to the bathroom, as the toilets were a high risk area. Then I would either rush out to avoid the majority of people leaving, or I would stay late to avoid people that way. When I finally got home, I'd make what I was supposed to pack for lunch, climb into bed, and eat it there. Looking back in hindsight, I now recognise that I was showing a lot of symptoms of depression, which explains why, at my lowest, I actually considered taking my own life. My mum was downstairs having an argument with her partner at the time, and I just felt a deep sense of impending doom. I of course had blocked what had happened before the refuge by now, but I can't help but wonder if that still played a part in how strong my reaction was. I remember turning to the index of the Red Pocket Bible, looking for advice on suicide. I can't remember the exact passage it suggested, but hey, it was total fucking garbage. And that's when something inside of me broke. In my first moment of genuine need, where I needed real advice, I discovered nothing but hollow platitudes. I was fucking pissed. In a hot snap, my sorrow turned to pure rage and before I knew it, I'd reached for my camping lighter and burnt the Bible there in my bedroom. And that night, I became a mysotheist. 
I went from someone who'd been paranoid over the possibility of being snuffed out and tortured for an eternity to someone who wasn't going to let such a vile being dictate my life. Though I must declare, this period wore off very quickly. Why? Well, at this age, I started to gain a better grasp of science and basic philosophy, such as the burden of proof. A big part of that was one of my school science teachers, our teacher of biology. We'll call him Mr. Science. Mr. Science went well and truly beyond teaching simple science class. He was a teacher who lived for the whole teach them how to think. Yes, he had to make sure we passed our exams, but he also did his best to show us various things about science and how it operates. I remember rather early on he did a demonstration of coincidence and just how badly we as people actually process a coincidence once the numbers involved enter double digits. I've seen some videos with Richard Dawkins talking to students about coincidence and it kind of echoed the same principle. He also taught us burden of proof in getting the entire class to try and prove the non-existence of the invisible polar bear. Why a polar bear? Well, we were doing adaptation and polar bears were one of our case studies, so he was using it as a form of revision as well. We'd offer a suggestion and he'd make an ad hoc response. I suggested thermal goggles. He responded, they're firmly insulated to such a degree that our goggles aren't sensitive enough to detect them. I didn't know this at the time, but he was clearly being influenced by Russell's teapot. Anyway, I started to take said methods of investigation and apply them to what I've been told by the Bible, the result of which was pretty much certain. Whilst pure rage hadn't been enough to deconvert me, merely having turned me into a mitotheist, coming at things from a growing understanding of science, was. Now my understanding has come a long way since then, and I'm not running on the very rudimentary understanding of science I had back then, but I think my experience does show us a lot about the dishonest portrayal of atheists as people who quote, hate God, end quote. I've been both a mysotheist and an atheist, and I can tell you, that's total crap. Now before anyone can accuse Mr. Science of being anti-religion, he never actually brought religion up outside of a single instance. Whilst teaching us evolution, he made the decision to spend the part of a single lesson telling us about young earth creationism. He explained to us the basics of radiometric dating, he knew we had previously studied half-life in physics, and used that to show us how we know the age of the earth is in the billions of years, not the thousands. He also got out of skeletons. Why? Well, because he wanted to show us that the number of ribs both men and women had were the same. He then explained that he'd once got into a dispute with one of the other teachers in the school. Apparently, the other teacher kept arguing that men had less ribs than women, only to have him pull out his skeletons and tell the other teacher to count them. He used this as an opportunity to explain how people can be wrong about even the most easily verifiable information. And that was all he ever talked about, religion. And by then, I'd already become an atheist thanks to the general principles Mr. Science had taught us and my own inquisitive mind. I began talking about the topic in public and found that a lot of people treated me with open hostility, as if me discussing the basis for their beliefs or lack thereof was a direct attack upon them rather than an open discussion. And yet my head teacher could come on stage, claim that this was not a religious assembly, before she began to openly preach Jesus to her school. As an atheist, I was expected to shut up and listen, something that influenced me creating the YouTube channel Imperial Atheist. I was a Warhammer 40,000 player at the time and played Imperial Guard, before moving from that channel over to Essence of Fort as I started college. The rest of it is a story you already know. Now before I go, I feel I should clarify that the primary, junior and secondary schools I attended were all part of the same name, and the primary and junior schools were next door to one another, with the secondary school being about 50 minutes walk away due to space requirements. That's why I was talking about them as different stages of the same experience. Now I of course don't know how other schools are, I don't really remember my first year of primary school or infant school during or before the refuge but I felt I'd lay out my experience with religion in the supposedly secular education. 
I hope this has given you a little more insight into why I do what I do, or at least the reason I started. Take care now. Hi there, I'd just like to say a few things here at the end of the video. First, I'd like to thank everyone who's ever donated to the channel via Patreon, giving a special thanks to the following people. Hannah Banghart, Matthew Kovac, John Schoenrock, Daniel Martinez, Ernst Puna, and Alexander Williams. Your support has ensured this channel was ability to grow over the years, and really is the only thing that manages to keep the channel afloat. I'd also like to ask that you comment down below and like this video, as well as subscribe and follow Essence of Thought on both Facebook and Twitter. Please also consider following Atheist Alliance International on Facebook, an organisation dedicated to helping atheists around the globe. Any comments utilising language which insults others on the basis of perceived gender, sexuality, ethnicity or ability both mental and physical will be removed immediately and the commenter may be blocked on the moderator's discretion. Let's keep this space one which upholds the humanist values. Thank you.